According to the official version of history, Russia remained under the political and military yoke of the Mongols for many centuries on end. The term Mongol is usually assumed to have always meant the same thing, however. This turns out to be incorrect. The modern interpretation is of a relatively recent origin. Bear in mind that Mongolia didn't exist as an independent state until the early 20th century. The word Mongol simply meant, Great One. Its association with the nomadic tribes hailing from the steppes north of China is a later invention. But why did it have to be invented? The reason is simple, the actual Mongol conquerors of Russia never existed. The yoke theory was created by the court historians of the new Russian dynasty, the Romanovs. It has served the end of justifying the Romanovs' claims for the throne and demonizing their long-time adversaries, the Horde, or the professional Russian army, which remained fiercely loyal to the old Russian dynasty. Deposed and finally destroyed by the Romanovs as a result of a conspiracy. The savage invaders and torturers of the Russian land that we read about in history textbooks were the protectors of the state in reality, and ethnic Slavs for the most part. Small wonder historians still cannot find a single trace of the mythical Mongol capital, no such capital ever existed anywhere near the Gobi Desert. History, fiction or science? Is finally available in English. This book will change your entire perception of history forever. What if ancient Rome, Greece and Egypt were invented during the Renaissance? What if the Old Testament was a rendition of events in the Middle Ages? What if Jesus Christ was born in 1053 and crucified in 1086 AD? Sounds unbelievable? Not after you've read History, Fiction or Science by Anatoly Fomenko, the leading mathematician of our time. Is it possible that ancient Rome, Greece and Egypt were invented during Renaissance? Can it be that Jesus Christ was born in 1053 AD and crucified in 1086 AD? History, fiction or science? Describes how the contemporary chronological scale was created and by whom? With the culprits named as the 16th-17th century clergy, The well-known model of history has enjoyed the relentless attention of prominent critics ever since its creation including respected people like Sir Isaac Newton and Jean Hardouin, the court librarian of Louis XIV, the Sun King of France. Roman and Egyptian chronology take a good beating. Paggio Bracciolini and Petrarch take the blame for creating the beautiful legend of a mythical classical age that never was. The biblical events are brought a lot closer to us both historically and geographically. The biblical Jerusalem is actually the medieval city of Constantinople. The New and the Old Testaments swap their positions in chronological order and are shown to refer to medieval events. Using astronomy and statistics to back his theories, Fomenko delivers an abundant astronomical proof showing that the identified dates of ancient eclipses are blatantly untrue. Fomenko explains the confusion between the antiquity and the Middle Ages, and how the division between the two is merely imaginary. The book contains in-depth descriptions of the research methods used as well as the most meticulous rendition of the global chronological map with its numerous errors and glitches explained in a very level-headed manner. One doesn't have to be a mathematician to comprehend Fomenko's presentation. History, fiction or science? Transforms history from fiction into a rocket science. It is a must-read for everyone who isn't entirely indifferent to human history and possibly also for those who are.
This book will change your entire perception of history forever. What if ancient Rome, Greece and Egypt were invented during the Renaissance? What if the Old Testament was a rendition of events in the Middle Ages? What if Jesus Christ was born in 1053 and crucified in 1086 AD? Sounds unbelievable? Not after you've read History, Fiction or Science by Anatoly Fomenko, the leading mathematician of our time.